Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Advanced One. Count words. This is one of my, f <clears throat> excuse me, one of my favorite problems in Module One, just because the pattern that we're about to establish can be extremely useful, and we start to see how objects can be pretty flexible, and we can use them to do things like count stuff. So, given a string, count words returns an object where each key is a word in the given string, with its value being how many times that word appeared in the given string. Notes, if given an empty string, it should return an empty object. So, and they tell us to count words for, <clears throat> excuse me, ask a bunch, get a bunch. We get this object as a result. So, let's talk about our edge case. If given an empty string, it should return an empty object. We'll copy and paste that down here as a comment. Put the second part of it on the next line. So, if given an empty string, it should return an empty object. Pretty simple, if str is equal to an empty string, return an empty object. So that's it for the edge case. Now if we think about it, let's, let's consider uh, how we're gonna approach this problem. So the first thing is that we realize the input is a string, but the output is an object. So we'll need to create an object. So we'll say create a result object. And we can jump down here a little bit and say return result object. Now the leaps that we're about to make are can sometimes be a little bit intimidating for a very like a new brand new be uh, beginner programmer and the question a lot of people ask me especially in mentor prep is was I supposed to just get that and arguably no a lot of times with these beginning uh, tips and tricks you're not going to be you're not going to want to write yourself off solely because you couldn't come up with it independently of outside resources a lot of times programming comes down to finding a recipe for what you want to do and following the recipe. Eventually when you follow enough recipes, you start to notice patterns and similarities and maybe start scribbling notes or adjustments to the recipes or even creating your own. But for our purposes for right now, it is okay if you had no idea how to do this problem and you're here just finding out how to do it. So take my word for it that if we want to look at each of these words individually, it's going to help if we have them in an array. We could iterate over the string, <clears throat> but I mean, you know, why? So we'll say split input string into an array of words. Now that we have an array of words, we want to iterate over the array of words so that we can look at each word individually. Now here's where we're going to make a pretty big leap. And the idea is this. There's two possibilities for every word that we come to. One possibility is that we have already seen that word, in which case the object, our result object, has that word as a key somewhere, and we just need to increment the value. So one version is, is that it is present. The other one is that it is not present. So at a certain point, we have an empty object. At the end, that object is full of stuff. So theoretically, <clears throat> there was a point where there was no ask key, there was no bunch key, there's no get key, and we add them as we go. So let's say two possibilities. One, if <clears throat> we have not counted the word, the current word yet. How do we do that? Not important at the moment. If we have not counted the word yet, instantiate the count for the current word in the object. Otherwise, and this is where that if-else dynamic becomes so nice because if we have not seen the word, the other version is that we have seen the word. The word exists as a key in the object, it has a value that's a number, so we just need to increment it. So we'll increment the value of the current word in the object. So here's that leap. If an object does not have a key, the value of that key that the object does not have is undefined. Let's head over to the console real quick and do a quick example. Variable object is equal to an object with a and one. Object.a gives us one. Object.x undefined. Object.boolean undefined. Object.anything in the world undefined. So what this shows us is that an object will can help us keep track of things. The other fun part about an object is let's say we say object.a is equal to one. Object doesn't change. So if we try to add a key again, it's not going to change it. It'll change the value. Were we to say object.a is equal to 2, it's going to change the object, but it's not going to make a duplicate key. 
So what that means is that this allows us to determine if we have seen a word or not based on checking the value of that word in the object. If the value of the word in the object is undefined, we know we have not counted the current word. So let's close the console and start coding this out. Available result is equal to an empty object. We're going to come down here on line 19 and return result. Split the input string into an array of words. So I'm going to say variable words is equal to str.split. And we're going to split it on a space like we did in the get all words problem. Iterate over the array of words. I'm just going to use a simple for loop. i is less than words dot length. I incremented each time. And you'll notice that I'm splicing in the uh, pseudocode into the code again. You don't have to do this. If you want to, you can write all of your code down at the bottom. I find that it's a little bit easier for teaching purposes to do it this way. But the curly braces can get a little weird. And if you're not used to looking at code like this, it can be kind of awkward. So don't feel bad if you have to just write your code outside of your pseudocode. Um, yeah, it's just not that big of a deal. So we'll get rid of those. Uh, if we have not counted the current word yet. Now we determined that if we have not counted the current word, we have to check the value within the object. So to get the value within the object, we say the name of the object. Then we're going to access it at a key. The key is the current word, and the current word is words at i. So result, the resulting object, at words at i, which is the current word. Oh boy. And if and that's a command z, by the way. If you ever hit anything and you wish you didn't, command z will do undo and usually put it back right. So here we're going to check to see if this is equal to undefined. If it's equal to undefined, and this is where splicing the code into the pseudocode gets kind of annoying because it's like, where do I put the um, curly brace, the closing curly brace for the if statement? I'm going to put it here so that this line 16 describes the else statement, but that's not obvious and it can be very tricky to keep these managed. So again, if you don't feel like splicing the code into the pseudocode, you don't have to. It's mostly just for demonstrative purposes. So result uh, at words at i, so that's how we would say that, is equal to undefined. Then we know we haven't seen the current word in our result object yet. We haven't counted it yet. So if that's the case, we're going to assign a value to this of 1. Because if we haven't seen it, but now we're looking at it directly, that means that the count for it is 1. So it went from being undefined to being 1. Otherwise, this step has happened before, and it's possible that this step has also happened before. But what's most important is that this is no longer true. If we're in the else portion, we know that we have seen the current word before, and all we need to do is add 1 to whatever total it has. So to do that, we access the value in this fashion and do one of a couple things. Let's just do plus equals 1. That's going to increment the value of this object. Sorry. It's going to increment the value of the current word within the object by 1, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So here's our edge case. If string is equal to an empty string, return an empty object. Then we're going to create a result object. We're going to set a variable called words equal to the string split on the spaces so that we get an array of all the words in the input string. We're going to iterate over that words array. If the current word, words at i, this value inside a result is equal to undefined, meaning we haven't seen it yet, then we're going to instantiate it as a value of 1. Otherwise, we know we're seeing it for the second or third or fourth or whatever time, so we're going to increment the value by 1. Okay, that's pretty much it, and so we're going to run the tests, and it's correct. Don't worry if you have to spend a lot of time on this problem. It can be very, very useful to understand this problem as carefully as possible. Uh, this pattern of using an object to keep track of things is going to happen over and over again, so you'll get used to it. But this is your first introduction, so no worries if it took you a while. Thank you very much for watching the video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.